This game caught my eye because it had an evil face on it. This is a game called Prognostic, and it's on Steam. It had a little scary face on it, so I was like, well, that'll be nice for a thumbnail. This game is $7, and it just came out uh, like a week ago. It's from a, a, the developer of Palmyra Orphanage, which I played on YouTube. So, not entirely uh, unknown. Let's go ahead and start a new game. All the stories mentioned in the game are fictional. Any resemblance to the... Yeah, we get it. We get what you're trying to say. Well, look at this. I have heard how my parents died. My brother and I were sitting in a locked bedroom and could only listen. We heard the knife stabs until their screams stopped. The police decided that our parents were accidentally killed during the robbery. I never believed it. In our neighborhood, no one had any money, especially immigrants like us. After a month in the orphanage, we were picked up by the only remaining relative in the States, a woman named Randolph. A woman Anita, named Randolph. Our grandmother. Our mom never talked about her and hid away her letters without opening them. I think that Mrs. Yes. Randolph thought that she cared about us. Is Randolph her last she name? Us. I still remember rituals, prayers, and constant promises to reveal what happened to our parents. But later, it was always later. When will we be ready? My brother was the first one to escape. He joined the police force. I left her after. I, like my mother before, did not respond to her letters. They were just another promise to reveal some secret if I came back. When they stopped, I sighed with relief, finally. A local lawyer visited us shortly after. Grandmother was killed, stabbed with a knife. They suspect a robbery. The voices of my parents came back, and they are not alone. Our town is eating itself. Death comes for our people, for my friends, and I, I can't take it anymore. Grandmother was trying to understand what was wrong. She tried to tell us, and I'm starting to believe her. She this saw Mrs. Crimes. Randolph to you. She helped the police to find the perpetrators. I have to take her place. I have to go back to her house. Why do you have to? In these in these indie horror games, they're always like, I I gotta go to this empty house by myself at night. I have to. I'm always like, do you have to? Look at this. No way. No way am I walking into this house. Come on, there's a deer skull on the table. There's what? I would not do this. Let's go. Let's go. Is this the front door? Oh, it's mysteriously locked, is it? I may be wrong, but I feel like I have played on this house before. There was some slasher game I played with a house that was very similar to this. Dread of Laughter? I might be wrong on that. It might not be the same house, it just looks like it. Um, go to the table and take the documents. Use the left mouse button to interact with items. Your brother is a police officer who needs your help. Every day he will send you a new crime case. Your goal is to solve it. You can use divination rituals to uncover new clues. Once you find the culprit, fill out the report and send it to your brother. Solve the test case to convince your brother to accept your help. Really? I kind of missed some of the stuff that was going on in the, uh, in the intro. I was too distracted by the fact that uh, the grandmother's name was Randolph, and then it was like, oh, wait, it's her last name? Because he called her Mrs. Randolph, and you couldn't, wouldn't call her that from her first name. So I don't know. Oh, fantastic idea. You blow out the candle. No. Okay. So in order to solve cases, we have to have occult, uh, occult symbols and deer skulls present, I guess. So wait, so we're solving cases for our brother, and he's going to, what, take the credit? Oh, come on. Let me in there, please. Look, a creepy bunny toy. This is great. You can't open any of the doors. So, so what's the what's the case that I'm solving? Press tab to open or close the case file. 
Oh, here we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's so much going on here. Personal case. Why did you come back? We've been watching this old woman go crazy through all our childhood, and now you want to take her place. What are you doing? Well, fine. Do you want me to help you? Then let's conduct a small test. Make an invocation to the souls of the dead and tell me, oh great seer, which of the neighborhood kids broke my window? I'll send you a description of them, just like the ones the old woman worked with. If you find out who did it, then we'll talk. One of them committed this terrible crime a couple of years ago, on December 14th, at 1 o'clock p.m. in 1902. <laughs> I live on the first floor in an apartment at 2 Meadow Street, and don't even think about deceiving me. I know who did it. I just want to test you out. So was it Patrick, Zach, Harrison, Andrew, or Jake? Who knows? Look at these. How long ago was this? 1902? Oh, it's 1904. Look, he even sent us, like, pictures of them. I don't know. Zach has pretty glowy eyes over there. So, what was that? Did you hear that shit? Oh, excuse me. Find the ritual candle. Other divinations can only work while the ritual candle is lit. Light a candle by using instructions from the book. Hold down the right mouse button to take a closer look. Okay, so our brother was with us when our our parents died, right? From a robbery, they were accidentally killed. So, is our brother the murderer? Is our brother did 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 they murder the parents and the grandmother? Whisper of the candle, the path to the unknown. Thanks. Instructions on how to establish and maintain contact with otherworldly allies. They will help you to answer your questions. Candle is necessary for each ritual. Any fortune telling is questions and answers, and the answers can be obtained only when there is one who can give you an answer. You cannot imagine what exactly had to be done to prepare this ritual. All you have to do is light a candle. That's a lot. That's a lot of information to tell me, like, you need the candle. All right, the candle is a conductor. We get it. The candle is important. It provides contact with the spirit world. Rituals only work while the candle is burning. Yes, I know. We need the candle. As soon as the contact is established, the light of all the candles will change to blue. As soon as the candle goes out, connection will be interrupted and rituals will become impossible. Right, because the candle is important. Did you guys know that the candle is important? At this moment, all candles will change their light from blue to yellow. You can find spare candles next to the candlestick. Remove the extinguished one and light a new one to reestablish the connection. Okay. Look at that. I can do it as many times as I want. Alright. What's up? Okay. Oh my gosh, it's blue. The doors of all ritual rooms are marked with clues. Find a room with a wall map. It has a symbol of compass. Oh wait, but haven't we established contact? Look, all the candles are blue, including my lighter. So are we supposed to like ask them something? So this is a compass, right? So what, I go in here? This place is, this place is disgusting by the way. Oh my gosh. In order to work with a ritual map, you need to use dowsing rods. Press Q to pull them out. Okay. Oh, these things. I remember using these in a game called White Day, a labyrinth named School. Wow. I haven't used them in a single game since, though. Place the file of one of the suspects on the stand. It's located next to the map. Follow the instructions in the book. The stand. Okay, first of all. We're looking at 1902, right? The art of search methods of finding. This method allows you to determine where people are located at any moment of time. After specifying the date and hour, you can hover the divining rods over the map and find the right place where they'll cross. This search will help to confirm an alibi, find missing persons, or find out who were on the scene of the crime. Look at the city. It's full of blind people. Keep an eye on them. It's full of the weak. Protect them. It is full of sinners. Punish them. Sounds like an anime protagonist over here. Ugh, I hate weak people. In order to find a person, do the following. Make sure that the ritual candle is lit. No problem, that's been burned into my brain. Put the person's dossier next to the map. Choose the time on the calendar, year, month, date, and hour. Hover dividing rods over the map. The closer the rods, the closer the person. The rods will cross in the place where the person was. The rods will spin if the ritual candle has gone out. What, like right now? The ritual candle hasn't gone out. Look, it's still here. Place the flag on the right address in order to add a clue. Okay, let me let me check real quick. Um, December 14th 
at one o'clock. Right. December. This is very, um, well, it, it was one o'clock, but 13. Okay. Patrick is a good, diligent boy, but he fell in with bad company. Great bio status suspect. <laughs> what about Zach? Let me look at his dossier. How can I go look at Patrick? Who cares about Patrick's dossier? Here we go. Lives in a workhouse nearby. A very quiet and sullen young man. The son of a single mother. Oh, wow. We know all about Harrison, apparently. He doesn't go to school. And during the day, he works as a janitor in a bar. I appreciate his desire to help his mother. But this is not the place where a child should grow up. How about it's not your business? The son of an owner of a hairdressing salon. A very quarrelsome kid. A very active boy, constantly running around somewhere and doing something. He has a great future ahead of him, if he manages not to get into trouble before that. Okay, so they're uh, they're all very nice. Yeah, let's get that. Oh, wait. Yeah, let's light these up. What is up? Huh, I think we're starting to lose connection. Okay, press uh, Q to pull them out. Place the file of one of the suspects on the stand. Uh, sure. Let's see, Patrick. Now, okay, press tab and find out the time of the crime. Aaron on the calendar, use the dowsing rods to check which of the guys was at this crime scene at the time. Okay. We, we, we lost connection, unfortunately. Because, oh, I'm so sorry I took forever. There we go. All right. Can't believe it expires. Okay, so they're apart, right? And that means that they weren't there. Because it was two Meadow Street. Yeah, so it's not him. So Zach, what about you? Though they're very far apart. What about you, Harrison? Oh, we've got ourselves a culprit here. Harrison, huh? Well, about you, Andrew? Oh, you weren't there either. Jake? Nope. Dude, it was, it was Harrison. Dude, he broke the window. After finding the culprit, you may return to the hallway and fill out the report. It lies on the table. Okay. Does it also tell the truth on the table? <laughs> okay. Send a clue about his location. Uh, well, and then we send. Kind of feels like a Reflect Studios game a little bit. It's not, obviously, but just in the in the loop. Achievement unlocked. Neophyte. Her methods are working. Who would have thought? Well, okay. If you're so anxious to find out what's wrong with our town, let's work on it together. Okay. Day one. Gift from God. Oh, my. I was allowed to take part in the preparations for a major court hearing. On the outskirts of town, at 18 Barnhill Street, lies the Fulton Farm. Look at look at all the Fultons here. Look at all of them. Don't they look like nice people? Not really. Okay, home for a closed and deeply religious family. As it turned out, they were too religious. <laughs> Earlier this year, one of them murdered their youngest relative in their own home. Now that's what I call too religious. All of the Fultons now cover the murderer, but only one of them made the sacrifice. I don't even know who was in the house. Try using dowsing to find the murderer. Okay, so we got to send the killer's dossier. Send his or her distinctive feature by using dowsing ritual on the victim. Send where the killer was during the murder. The time of death is marked in the victim's dossier. So is Luke the victim? Victim. Date of death, January 8th, 1904. I don't know much about Luke. I saw him a couple times in the church. A calm and cheerful boy. It's a pity that everything turned out this way. Wow, yeah, we can tell you're real broken up about it. Nathan Fulton, Luke's father. Awkward. Absent-minded. Every part of his life is dictated by his parents. I've always felt sorry for him, but even compassion has its limits. 
Alicia. There she is. Luke's mother, one of those people who can answer any question with a quote from scripture. Our senior detective thinks she is very sorry about what happened, but it seems to me that she is disappointed not in their act, but in something else. I don't know. She does look disappointed, doesn't she? Annabelle. She is convinced that she is part of the world's first family of saints. Six billion people in the world, and you're the first family of saints, really? How she came to this conclusion is not clear. Conrad, the patriarch of the family. He was first who told us about the ceremony. He compared himself to Abraham. He said that they gave their greatest treasure to God. I noticed that he often averted his eyes during the interrogation. It looks like he's hiding something. Yeah, well, apparently we're just going to copy this down. January 8th, 1904. January 8th, 1904. Got it. Whoa. House is actually pretty big. So I go to the compass room again? Okay, yeah, I guess so. Uh, let's see. Well, actually, it'd be quicker to go this way. January 8th, 1904. Did you hear that? January 8th, 1904. Stop that! Who is doing that? So, okay, wait, what's this? Bro, who keeps closing the doors? Do they automatically close? They must automatically close. Okay. How dare you? Okay, they just automatically close. I don't like that. The meaning of things, dowsing. Put the victim's dossier on the stands. Walk around the house. Oh, this is different. Crossing of the rods will indicate the direction towards object. Find out on which the objects the rods interact uh, intersect. Memorize the object and return to this book. If the rods are starting to rotate, the ritual candle was extinguished, light up. Find out the meaning of the item and mark the killer's feature on the nearby list. Clothing, painting, books, fireplace, clocks, bed, blades, toys, candles. Okay, well, let's do, let's put Nathan here. Hey, Nathan, uh, another personal kid, but uh, we're gonna find out if you killed your son, I guess. <laughs> Damn, would it kill you to like call an exterminator before we do this? Is the ritual candle always in here? Find the room marked with the dowsing rods sign. Okay, so that's, it's probably. I didn't do that. Oh, the victim's dossier, right? Sorry, sorry. Painting, no? Is it the painting? Maybe we go this way? Clock. It's the clock. Okay. So what does that mean? Oh my gosh. Um, clocks. Murderer is 30 years old or older. Wow. Great. Well, how old is Nathan? Nathan's 29. Alicia's 20. Whispers indicate that one of the mirrors has opened. The dowsing rods will point the way to that mirror. Close it as soon as possible to get rid of the intruder. Intruder! Intruder, I got rid of it. So it's gotta be either Annabelle or Conrad. Okay, so the killer's feature is, well, actually no, we would put the victim's dossier in it. 30 years or older. I don't, we don't know anything else. Okay, so that narrows it down to two people. I didn't like that, I didn't like that crap about the intruder.
the hell was that? 18 Barnhill Street. 18 Barnhill. Okay. Let's go ahead and start it. All right, let's see. Where were you, Annabelle? 18 Barnhill. Oh, really? Oh, really? What about you, Conrad? Were you in the same... Dude, he wasn't anywhere near there. Dude, Conrad was like... Conrad was like over here. What was that? Okay, so... Clearly... It was Annabelle. Miss, uh... Miss... I, I'm the first family of saints over here. Okay, so then it was Annabelle. She's over 30 years and she was at the scene. So, yeah, that was it. I got an achievement. New Abraham. I heard something terrible today. I just heard a woman blaming her husband for not being able to kill his own grandson. Annabelle, quote, had to do it herself to appease the voice of God. This case gave me an idea about death of our grandmother. The strikes of different people should be different, right? I studied the autopsy results of our grandma and found a couple of oddities. Each stab was weaker than the previous one. In the course of the struggle, such a clear pattern is impossible. The direction of the blows also doesn't match up. They are too similar and weird. Knife strikes were aimed at the chest area, and the blade was directed not upwards or downwards, but almost perpendicular to the body. Maybe she was killed in her sleep, and the whole robbery was staged. If so, then someone was trying to disguise premeditated murder. Who wished her death? I will try to find the last people she spoke to. Oh, okay. So we're not only, like, solving the cases that they're sending us, but we're also solving the death of our own grandmother and parents. Interesting. Interesting. This is actually this is actually pretty cool so far. Day two. Tough lesson. Are you sure everything is alright? Here, take a look at the take a look at our take a look at our suspects over there. Look at them, they're so smug. Are you sure everything is alright? I know that at night you are busy helping me. And during the day you try to open new rooms in the house. But there is a limit to everything. Maybe your hallucinations with mirrors are just a reaction to a lack of sleep. Do me a favor and go to rest as soon as you finish this case. A local school teacher died of a heart attack right in the middle of the church. This case would not interest us if the headmistress of the same school had not died of the heart attack at the exact same hour. Do you want to know about another coincidence? The headmistress corresponded with our old woman for the last several years. Autopsy has shown that they were poisoned an hour before their death. Find out who did it. Okay. Send the killer's dossier. Mark where the killer was during the poisoning. It happened one hour before the murder. The perpetrator and the victims had to be in the same place. Send two of his features. Two? By using dowsing on two victims. Okay, so here's one of the victims, Aaron, who I would have picked him for the murderer. Look how smug he is. A teacher in a public school. He died of a heart attack in front of his wife while they were attending church. How sad. Age is dead. I love that. How old are they? They're dead. That's how old they are. Headmistress of the school. She experienced coronary symptoms while she was in the shoemaker's shop. Shoemaker called for help. But by the time the medic arrived, Miss Barr had already died. So, so wait. So she was in the shoemaker's shop. Who's the shoemaker? There's so many characters. So he was at church. She was in the shoemaker's shop. Here we go. Here are our suspects. Tristan. You son of a bitch. In his homeland, Mr. Knirk it worked as a doctor. When he arrived here, he managed to get a job only as a school janitor. Hmm, interesting. You work at the school, huh? He started a family in our town. Tristan is a proud Irish, so he often has problems with the locals. Wait, where is this? His son attended our local school in Mr. Kelly's class, but stopped due to personal differences with other kids. I think that this is only part of the story, and it's worth taking a look at. A closer look at, okay, Diana Kelly is Mr. Kelly's wife. She worked, uh, she works as a science teacher at the same school. Okay. Oh, so this is the victim's wife, right? She is a daughter of an apothecary, so she may understand a thing or two about poisons. 
In addition, it was rumored that her husband was having an affair with the headmistress. That's Florence. So Diana had not only the opportunity, but also the motive. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So Aaron and Florence were getting it on? The teacher and the headmistress, Spencer Byrne. Unfortunately, he is my neighbor. <laughs> he was expelled from the local school. A great achievement considering who continues to study here. Um, Mr. Byrne continued to hang out with his old friends. He bragged to them that he would punish those who kicked him out. Wow. Molly Parker. Miss Parker is obsessed with her daughter's success. Who's her daughter? And that's all you need to know about her. Oh, okay. She often quarreled with Mr. Kelly because he refused to raise her daughter's annual grade. The headmistress, Miss Barr, supported him on this. I know that doesn't look like a motive for murder, but it could have been enough for Miss Parker. Are you serious? I think Molly looks the most evil. Look at that. Where were they during the poisoning? It happened one hour before the murder. So that's important. So January 28th at 12 o'clock. January 28th. And it happened at, the poisoning happened at noon. Okay, <laughs> dead. <laughs> what does that mean? Stop doing that, okay. Well, first of all, Thanks. hmm. Yeah, let's find out where everybody was. Stop. Okay, so here's a mirror, by the way. Gotta keep track of the mirrors. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, light this, I guess. That's where you were, huh? I don't know where that is. <laughs> I don't know where that is. What about you, Diana? Huh? Where were you at? Oh, over here, huh? Something. You were right there. Let's take a look at you, Spencer. Where were you at? Hmm? Hmm? You were also there. I thought you were expelled from school. Is that where the school is? I'm a little busy. Dude, Molly was also there. What? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, now let's find out where Aaron is. So this is the school right there. Florence, where were you? Oh wait, no, that's the church. Wait, they were all there? That doesn't make any sense. Let, let's get this out of the way. It looks like Diana is actually innocent because she's the only one that wasn't there at the same at the same time. The perpetrator and the victims had to be in the same place. So it's not Diana. Like we, we can go ahead and get rid of this actually. We don't need to know any more about her. She wasn't there. Okay, send two of his features. Did you just spoil it? I guess I gotta go do some dowsing. Okay, so let's see. Aaron. Let's find out something about your killer, shall we? It's like a toy. This green dinosaur toy? What does that mean? Fucking... Don't do that! I'm trying to solve a mystery right now! The color of the toy shows the color of the murderer's eyes. Oh shit. Close it! No intruders on my watch. So their so their eyes were green. Eye color, green. Okay. So with that in mind, uh, what color are all y'all's eyes, dude? Eye color green. How about you? Eye color green. Oh, okay. Well. Eye color blue. Eye color green. So we know that Spencer didn't kill Aaron. Is it clothes? 
brown. Brown clothes. Right? Yeah, it's brown clothes. Clothing will tell you the color of the hair. So the hair color is brown. Let's take a look. Tristan! Was it you? And Molly's hair is black. It was Tristan! Oh. We got you, buddy boy. We caught you red-handed with really shaky evidence. Yeah! Time to submit it? <laughs> Fuck off. So, it was, it was Tristan. No. Yeah. Yeah. It was Tristan. Green eyes, brown hair, and was at the same place. Send it, send it off. I got an achievement, fruit of knowledge. I'm so smart. Mr. Knark told the investigator about how the school treated his son. The teachers uh, did their best to make him quit the school. This Irish boy should know his place. And other nonsense you'll hear in old families. That's just too bad, isn't it? So they must die. It all ended. It all ended with the teacher persuading other children to beat him up. That guy, I knew that guy looked smug for a reason. It worked too well, and now this boy will not be able to walk. Mister Knurk said that his son's future was taken away from him, and that he couldn't bear it. I won't say that I condone his decision, but I understand him. Okay. The connection with our old woman turned out to be a dead end because remember, the grandmother um, of our of our two brothers, she spent time with uh, the headmistress who died there. It turns out that she was in active correspondence, but not only with the headmistress, but with several professors throughout the country. An academic, it would seem, Miss Randolph. They discussed some scientific issues. I will study her letters and report the result later. Day three, working disagreements. An old policeman asked us for help. He used to work with our grandma, but stopped after the police cut all ties with her. If we help him, he will tell us why. This interested me, so I decided to agree. The case itself is solved. Mr. Bones, a sailor dismissed from the Navy, quarreled with his new employer over money and killed him during a scuffle. He threw the body into the basement of some abandoned house. Uh, Bones' confession is already on my desk. The problem is that the murder took place at night, and Bones was drank, so he has absolutely no memory in which cellar the body lies. The relatives of the murdered man asked to find the body for a burial, determine the hour of death, and find where the victim and Mr. Bones were at the time of the murder. If you succeed, this cop will tell us something new about our old woman. Okay. Mr. Sharp was the owner of a small bookstore on Barnhill Street. Recently, he decided to expand and hired a young assistant named Colin Barnes, or Bones, sorry. Witnesses claim that they often argued, especially recently. Date of death, 1904. You don't even have... Okay. Colin Bones is a former sailor. Bones met Mr. Sharp while serving in the Navy. According to a neighbor's testimony, Mr. Bones came to work on January 2nd, drunk. Mr. Sharp took him out of the store and they went somewhere else. During the interrogation, Mr. Bones admitted that he attacked Mr. Sharp and hid his body in the basement of a nearby abandoned house. He couldn't remember exactly where it happened. Really, so this is all about location then. Wait, what's this? Oh, is this a new one? Find out the hour of death. It's a new uh, um, room, new tool for us. Okay, so let's, uh, let's put Aaron's dossier there. This method will help you to find when any person will die, their final hour and day. Unfortunately, it will not show the year so you have to find from another source. The circle will show you the hour and the day of death. After finding out the final hour, you'll be able to use the map to determine its location. This will be able to check the, check the alibis of your suspects. Getting so complicated. You cannot change the final hour. This is the main lesson that you should understand. We begin our existence already in the shackles of fate. I left this ritual so you could fully realize everyone is doomed and you are not an exception. Calm down. God, you're so dramatic. Okay, ritual candles lit. Victim dossier on the stand. Got it. Determine the zodiac sign of the victim by using the table on the next page. All right. Yeah, what was your... I noticed it had your date of birth. July 11th, 1860. July 11th. So you're cancer. Okay. Or that sign. 
Wow, this is complicated. Turn the wheel of Thanatos so that the black arrow points to the zodiac sign of the person. My god. So... It's gonna be that one. Okay. Identify the key letter of the first name. It depends on the element as described on the next page. God, there's so many steps to this. Water sign. The last letter of the name. So in this case, it would be P, sharp. So the key letter, oh, of the first name. So N, I guess. It's hard because it says of the name, but then this one says the last name. Open the Chaldean table on the next page. Determine the, let, uh, the number for key letter of the name. So that's N. So that's five. God, there's so many steps, dude. Turn the wheel of Thanatos so that the red arrow points to the key number of the name. Uh, what number? What are you talking about? I don't know if you have to light the candle first. I mean, I guess I'll go do it. I was trying to get as much time as possible. Oh. Okay, so it's, it's pointing towards five. It showed up now. Identify the key letter of the last name, which would be, wait. It depends on the element as described on the next page. If the surname has identical letters, then the key letter of the surname is the last one. If not, then it's the first one. Huh? If the surname, Sharp, If the surname has identical letters, then the key letter of the surname is the last one. If not, then it's the first one. Well, there are no identical letters. So it would be the first one, S. Determine the key number of the surname, three. Blue arrow towards three. So the blue arrow goes towards three. The icon means that the death happened in the morning. Oh, the sun icon, the moon icon shows that it happened in the evening. So you need to add 12 to the hour of the wheel. What? Oh, these all, okay, sorry, I understand. They all change these things in the center. 12 to the hour on the wheel. Two, one. Oh shit. I got lucky. I got lucky on that one. Okay, so the hour, oh my God, it's upside down. That's annoying. I didn't even, I wasn't reading this. So month one, day two, hour 12 at night. So well, wait, so it would be zero. If it was mid 12 at night, so midnight, so zero. Add a clue using the calendar. Don't forget about the moon sign. Add. Oh, well, I guess 24. Okay. So now, well, thank you for storming. So now we go to the compass, right? So, so we're looking for... Should I put 24? That's what it has on the thing. Yeah, you can't do 25. Alright, so let's find out where he is. Six Meadow Street. Okay. Let's, uh. What was that? So he was also there. Fuck off, man. So then. The location of the victim, the location of the suspect. So it would be this. I got an achievement, save Haven. We checked the place you indicated and found the body. Great. So our new friend agreed to tell us about his work with our grandma. Previously, she was often approached by local officers and she helped them without any charge. It all ended because of the last case. She's found for them one particularly brutal gang. 
but they were released because of the personal order of Judge Brooks. The next day, all 12 criminals shot themselves. They say that the last of them was muttering something before his death. It was something about the voice of God calling them from beyond. The police didn't work with our old woman after that. Okay. Day four, sins of the past. The whole city knows about this case. In 1882, smugglers on a run from the Rangers hid in a house on the outskirts of the town at one Southway Road and killed local shepherd and his family. The case was closed many years ago. Now part of that gang has decided to move back to our town. I've already found them and I know that almost all members of the gang were involved in that case. I don't need your help to find the guilty. On the opposite, send me the name of those who were not in that house in 1882 on the day of the murder. They will go to jail. The rest of them will meet the gallows. Send the dossiers of those gang members who did not participate in the murder. They were not at the crime scene at the hour of the murder during the massacre of 1882. So Zachary Harrison here, he and his family were massacred in 1882 when a gang hiding from persecution broke into their house. Many of those thugs have since gained influence. This year, they came to the city as if they own it. Okay. Edward Gallagher. He just joined the gang during that year. He was described by the witnesses as a frightened kid. Now he is one of the most brutal hired guns in the state. Sounds good enough for me. Let's, let's cuff him. Jamie Webb, one of the most violent women I've ever met. She single-handedly organized several robberies, all with a huge number of victims. She has settled down a little and now prefers to leave blood on the hands of others. Jackson Burns. He was involved in bribing of the police and authorities in order to get his friends out of prison. He has tried to clean his reputation in recent years. Oh, really? Oh, pfft. Dexter. In his youth, he was a womanizer, but now he confesses his love only to a bottle. He lives in the pubs and drinks until he forgets. I think that he has a lot of things that he wants to forget about. And then there's Julio, the only member of the gang who has been doing the same thing all these years. He focuses on cattle stealing. Mr. Perez worked on the South, so local don't really know him. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out the hour of death for Zachary over here. Let's get you on here, Zachary. Find out when you died. Okay. Zodiac sign, right, May f uh, May 29th, you're Gemini, huh? Yeah, very cool, very cool. Gemini, that's, uh, that's that one. The key letter of the first name, uh, Gemini is air sign, third letter of the name, or the first, it has fewer than three letters. Okay, well it doesn't, so the third letter, so C. Um, I'm gonna get faster at this. Okay, so that needs to go towards C, but actually C is three, so it goes towards three. All right, let's go light his candle, I guess. Dowsing rods are freaking out. Okay, C three, very good. And then uh, the key letter of the last name, let's see. If there are more than five letters in the surname, yep, then the key letter of the surname is the fifth one, so I, I is one. So we're looking at 11, 20, and it's at night. Four at night? Wow, 4 a.m. So 16. And then the year is actually 1882. That's kind of important to not screw up. Right? They were not the crime scene. Hmm. Okay, let's find out where he was. Wow, one Southway. Oh, it told us that, didn't it? One Southway. Okay. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. So what about you, Eddie? Uh, you were there, huh? Jamie was there too. Interesting. Jackson? <gasps> Jackson was not there. He was out of town. How do I mark that?
Damn. How do I mark that he was out of town? So, Julio. Julio and Jackson were both out of town. Send the dossiers of those gang members who did not participate in the murder. Oh, okay. I just have to send their dossiers. I don't have to send a clue. Well done. We will visit them tonight. Still, it's strange that they came back here after so many years and take the risk of being executed. They are not the only ones, though. We've already arrested several wanted criminals who suddenly just showed up in our town. The new judge is tired of signing death sentences. It seems to me that we began to attract all kinds of madmen. Okay. Day five. Party killer. Get it? Isn't that funny? Wow. Lots of uh, lots of people who look very similar. I'm sorry. Some of these some some of these people look very similar. Look at this. Yeah, y'all are siblings, all right. I couldn't understand all of these terms and formulas from her letters, so I asked a local professor for help. Turns out that in his youth, he studied with our old woman at the university. She had a science degree. Who would have thought? Unfortunately, this gentleman's family suffered a tragedy. His granddaughter was killed. She and her fellow students threw a three-day party. What? Three-day party? This is some extrovert bullshit. I hate this. I'd be there for like five hours and I'd be like, Nah, I'm done. Done now. She and her fellow students threw a three-day party at 6 Barnhill Street. And after walking away from the hangover, they found her already cold body. How sad. The murder took place in October 1904. We do not know the exact day. Great. That's like my least favorite thing to do in this game right now is finding out the exact hour. I saw how our grandmother was able to establish a connection between the killer and the victim using tarot cards. If you repeat this ritual and find the killer, the professor will help us with letters. Oh. Send the result of the victim's tarot reading. So there's like a new element here. Okay, so Rebecca Dean here, killed in 1904. She was a student. She came to her sister's birthday party. The guests thought that she had left early, but three days later, her body was found in the basement with a stab wound. Too many knife killings have been happening in the town lately. What about you, Selena? I barely managed to get her to talk. The girl was heartbroken. She adored her sister. And guess what? You have something in common. She is fond of fortune telling. Jacob, he was a brother of the victim and lived with her. He claims that he left the party on his first day, uh, on the first day. Other witnesses could not confirm this. Alan Leary. Oh, there's like a bug where you can't click on him sometimes. Uh, Victor Sanders, the victim's neighbor. The families are in strained relations because of the ongoing dispute over the land borders. He, he himself claims that he had no problems with Rebecca. I see. The fiance of Selena. Okay. He was the one who found the body. The guy was clearly shocked. Okay. I'm suspicious of all the dudes right now. Do I go upstairs? <gasps> They're looking on the second floor. It says so right there. Oh, there are mirrors up here. I don't like that. I haven't been killed yet. This is a no death run at the moment. Excuse you. Okay. Let's take a look so we can get clues about... Killer used a false identity. Oh my gosh. This tarot card reading will help to find out the connection between the victim and the killer. Oh, perfect. Okay. Make sure the ritual candle is lit. Uh, not yet, but we'll put the victim's dossier in the stand. Shuffle the deck until its images shine with light. Start opening the cards one by one. Watch out for the death card. If you see it, do not open further. Shuffle again and start from the beginning. Keep opening cards until you'll draw the justice. Open and memorize one final card after that. After justice, okay? Find out the meaning of the card and mark the connection between victim and killer. Ah, uh, I see. So if I see death, death has come for you. Shuffle the cards if you don't want to meet it. Justice, the divination has begun. The following card will tell you about the killer. Okay, so let's go, um, let's go do it. Okay. Okay, so here they, they're glowing. Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Justice. Okay, so this next one is going to tell us about the killer. Tower. Okay, let's see. Tower. What number is this? 16. 
The murderer is part of the, of the family. The murderer is part of the family. Really? So it's either Selena or Jacob. Mark can send where he was at the hour of the murder. He was. I mean, so is it Jacob then? Okay. Day of death, 1904. Ugh, we have to find out the stupid... This is the only part of this I don't like. I feel like it's it just takes so much time to do this. Rebecca, Rebecca, so what? September 24th? Um, so what, you're Libra? Wow, fascinating. Okay, so... Um... I'm a little busy right now. Kila, the first name, let's see. Libra is air sign. Third letter, third letter of the name. B, B is two, ugh. More than five letters in the surname. There are not. It's the last one, so N, which N is, N is five. Oh, fuck. What the hell? It's upstairs. Close it, close it. Whoa. That was close, dude. So what, is October? What year is it? What year is it? 1904. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's... October... 5th... Hey! Do you mind? Hour 2, and then we add 12 to that, so... 14. And it's correct, because otherwise it would tell me. Okay, Jacob, huh? Yeah, we'll see where you were, idiot. Well, I promise I wasn't at the party, honest. Ah, fuck off. What the fuck? What's happening? What's happening? What is this? Do I need to, do I need to like... Oh, I think I need to extinguish the, the ritual candle. What was that? Appreciate that. Fuck you. Fuck off. I'm going to find out where Jacob murderer Jacob was, okay? Oh wait, I need to find out where Rebecca was first. Sorry. Yeah, let's find out. Let's find out where you were, okay? Barnhill Street. Six. Barnhill. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Jacob was telling the truth. Where were you? Whoa, it's Selena. Oh my God, you were there. I could have, sw I, I swear it was Jacob. Oh, fuck off. No. No, 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 no. No, I c Okay. I don't know why I'm so scared. It's like, th this game's doing a great job though. Uh, can I, okay, I eat, guilty, guilty, guilty. Murder is part of the family. And uh, yeah, she was there. So I did it. I put a little pressure on her during the interrogation and she began to sing. 
I thought that she did it out of jealousy, but there was something else. Only during the interrogation, she mentioned where she heard about the betrayal of her groom and her sister in a dream. This professor lost his second granddaughter. I personally came to arrest her, and yet he kept his word. During her university years, our grandma came up with an insane theory of what she called consciousness transmission. This is the assumption that thoughts and feelings live in some kind of invisible field that can affect people. Judging by her last letters and recent years, she has come to the conclusion that even the thoughts of deceased people can emit these residual waves. If I didn't know what your fortune, how you, that your fortune telling works, I would consider these records to be absolute nonsense. Maybe the professor's granddaughter heard something from beyond. Day six, street justice. This time I sent you an example of a crime that no one wants to solve. One couple terrorized residents of a small neighborhood. They carried out armed robberies and intimidated witnesses after. The locals couldn't do anything about it because the girl's father is, let's say, quite an influential person. It all ended badly. The couple was killed, Amelia, at the end of 1903 near the house at 7 Glower Street. Lucas in September 1904 in a local shop at 4 Glower Street. Um, experts said that they were shot from the same revolver. The locals refused to testify. Maybe they deserved it, but if we don't arrest the culprit, they, their friends will come to the neighborhood and we will have a lot more victims on our hands. So we got to send the killer's dossier, send where they were. Let's just treat he as they, because the last time it was a she. Uh, at the hour of the first murder, send where they were at the hour of the second murder, send the results of the victim's tarot reading. Okay, so we gotta do, we gotta do some sort of tarot reading, I guess. Okay, so let's, let's look at Amelia here. Died in 1903. Ambitious, bold, and petty. She was the one who chose the shops and businesses that she and her husband would rob. She called herself the queen of the town and behaved accordingly. She was killed first. Three shots to the chest. Her own gun was in her hand. You must understand how much she was hated. The body lay on the street for several days until a patrolman found it. During this time, none of the neighbors or witnesses contacted the police. Lucas. He used to be a petty troublemaker, but under the guidance of his second half, he began to act much more wisely. Not a single accusation against them ever reached court due to the lack of evidence and a little help from the girl's father. When we reported that we could not find the killer, he flew into a rage. One evening, visitors of the bar heard him say that soon the locals would regret about what they did and that he was already and that he already stocked himself up with guns. His body was found the next day. Harper Marsh. During the night, she worked as a waitress in a local bar. She was one of the few friends of Amelia. They had a quarrel after Amelia became jealous of her boyfriend. Who's your boyfriend, Thomas? He's a handyman. He was working part-time in a fishing shop at the time when Lucas Walker trashed that place, okay? Matthew Price, primary school teacher. We don't know what caused the conflict, but in the police archive, there's a statement about Mr. from Mr. Price that a month before his death, Lucas ambushed him at the door of the house and beat him up. Jerry Hancock, janitor, moonlights as a cleaner, and several shops. Several witnesses saw him quarreling with walkers, but the reason for the quarrel remains unknown. Who's Harper's boyfriend? We didn't get to find out. Evie, the owner of a barber shop. She claimed that she was robbed by Lucas Walker last year after a quarrel with his wife. Wow, everybody's arguing with these guys. There were no witnesses to this, so the police could not do anything. Let's go read some tarot cards. Let's, uh, let's put Amelia here. Okay. Temperance. It's like opening a booster pack. The Empress. Strength. Come on. Justice, okay, this next one will tell us the clue. Judgment, and this is number 20. The murderer seeks justice. Okay. Okay, actually... Holy fuck! What happens? I don't understand what this- what is this? No, it has 
has nothing to do with the ritual candle. I, 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 I extinguished the ritual candle and... I extinguished the ritual candle and I, I don't know what, what is that? Justice. The Emperor. The Emperor. That's number four. The killer is a man. Huh. So the killer is a man and the killer seeks justice. The killer is a man for Lucas and they seek justice when they killed Amelia. Oh, fuck. What the? It's downstairs. Oh! Oh, did you see that? Somebody was about to come out. Some creepy old lady looked like. Okay, let's find out the exact. Oh, when did you die? Okay, 1903. Yeah. And when was your birthday? August 13th, 1887. Wow. Fascinating. So you're a Leo, huh? Fire, the first letter of the name, so A. A1. Really? Okay, and then what? And then the set. All identical letters. Two. I think this is right. The, the, the good thing is it'll tell me if it's not. So January 28th. Yeah? Cool. That's right. What was that? I'm busy right now. I don't have time for you. Okay, Lucas. How about you? October 5th. So you're... You're a Libra. Fascinating. Let's see. Air. Third letter of the name or the first. So C. C is three. Then the key letter of the surname is the fifth one. So E, E is five. Excuse me. Thanks. What the hell? Oh, oh, well, we lost the ritual, but we already got it. Oh, but we need the... Oh, fuck off. Upstairs. Dude, she came out. She came out like that. So quickly, you are nine. Wait. Nine, six, eight. Nine, six, eight. But it, wait, so it was actually 20. 1904. Look at that. Okay, I got all the clues. This one, this one's like the longest, uh, longest case so far. And it's because of the Zodiac stuff. It takes so long. It takes so long to... F I want to know the exact time of the murder for the next one, please. So, Amelia, 128, 1903. 1903, and 13. Right. That's right. So, we got to find out where she is, um, and I got to go light the thing. Right, so we knew that. 7 Glower Street, Lucas. 4 Glower Street. Okay. Let's uh let's solve you yours first. Oh, dude. That's frustrating. He wasn't there. Matthew Price was there. Wow. Um, so when were you dead? 
So nine, six, 20. Okay, so that's where you are. Just to confirm, just to confirm. Thomas, huh? No. Jerry. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. So then the, the murder seeks justice. The killer is a man. Let's take a look at this. Now, assuming that it's the same person, it would have to be Jerry. Because he was, he was there at both times. And he's a man. Where was he? What? Uh, first murder. Second murder. Send the result of the victim's tarot reading. I mean, I, I would think that that would be what we'd want to send. Because the murderer seeks justice. It's like, well, okay, that doesn't really tell us anything. I think this is the only thing. I think this is what we have to do. Okay, I got it. A murder weapon was found in Mr. Hancock's house. I believe that he did not act alone, but he refuses to name any accomplices. During the interrogation, he almost immediately confessed and said that he was haunted by thoughts of their murder. This thought didn't end, even with the death of the walkers. Now he dreams about other murders. This cannot be a coincidence. All killers mention strange dreams and voices. It seems that among the dead hides the one who can control the living. It's good that there is one among us who is able to control the dead. It is you who can control them and not vice versa. <laughs> right? Day seven, rags to reaches. Is that supposed to be a pun? Is that a pun? There must be an explanation of why you are starting to see her more often. Maybe it's because you are using more of her rituals and they are making contact easier. But why does she hunt you if she herself left you all these instructions? So that's grandma that we've been seeing in the mirror. I know it's hard for you, but we have to keep going. You've saw the last case. Those who hear the voice cannot stop after one murder. Someone has to catch the guilty, otherwise we will face even more deaths. Over the past couple of months, screams and sounds of fighting became a common thing. Such a fight recently occurred on the outskirts. We have found a body in the homeless camp at Southway Road 1. Interesting, we've also... That's where we had another murder, wasn't it? That's where the massacre took place by the gang. I talked to the informant and identified five suspects who could have been there at the time of the death. 1904, early September. Fuck you. Stop making me figure out the time of death. The problem is that they can hide anywhere. I don't need to find all people from there, just the killer. Send me the name of the killer and where he is today on the 30th of November, 1904. Brantley. Let's, let's, let's learn about Brantley. He arrived in the city by train a little less than a year ago. He has a record for disorderly conduct. He visited a gambling house from time to time. It's workers say that he recently won a large sum of money. Oh. Ryan Turner, former soldier. He was detained several times for violating the order. Okay, that's really not that much information. Max Richardson. He worked on the laying of the railway until he injured his leg. Several interviewed witnesses say that he has scars on his body from old gunshot wounds. Sebastian Bach. Ha! <laughs> that's kind of funny. Street artist. He sold his drawings at the intersection of Highfield and Nower. Not so long ago, after he started to hang out with Edwards, he began to dabble in petty theft. Who's Edwards? Elliot Edwards! A handyman and a troublemaker. He was fired after he stole money from work. He had a passion for poker, and this is a dangerous thing. Alexandra Stanley. She is a beggar, and this is the only thing you know about her. We can usually find her near the town hall on Barnhill Street. Well... I don't really care about that. All right, Brantley, let's go. Uh, All right, March 4th. Pisces, very interesting. I'm saying that sarcastically, because who would ever find this interesting? Not me. There's Pisces, my God, it took forever. Uh, now Pisces, the interesting thing about Pisces is it's water sign. The last letter of the name. So that would be Y. Last one. So first one. So H. So H. Five. Nine. Three. Two. No. No. 
Sebastian. And Elliot were both there. Alexandra was not. So it's between Sebastian and Elliot. Do we need to do a tarot card reading? I think this is, the, the game's starting to open up a little bit. It's like doing less telling and more like, hey, figure it out. Okay, so Sebastian is uh, blonde hair, blue eyes. Elliot is brown hair, black eyes. So actually dowsing might be the way to go here. All right, let's uh, put you there, buddy. Oh, it's actually... Oh, fuck off. Get out of my face with that. I got really lucky. A candle. The rods are silent. That's not helpful! Oh my god. Get... Oh my god, stop it. Let's go, let's go tarot, I guess. Justice. The High Priestess. The murderer has an accomplice. Sorry, no. That explains everything. Ah. Ha! We've solved it. Oh, wait, no. We need to know where they are now. Yeah, let's find out where you are now, huh? Where are you? Dead. Sebastian's dead? How about you? Really? Got it. Uh, that's where he is. It turned out that we were dealing with two murders. This morning, Edwards tried to hang himself in his cell. He said that he planned to share the loot with Bach, but the devil convinced him to keep everything for himself. We were right. It was this voice again. The people who've fallen under the influence of the voice are not connected in any way. They have only two things in common. First, they all live in our town. And second, this voice compels them to commit murder. Murders. Whoever that voice is, it wants to drown our city in blood. Maybe our grandmother was trying to stop it. I'm gonna go so far as to say grandma ain't the good guy, considering I've seen her emerge from mirrors and kill me. Day eight, house fire. Ooh. I decided to leave this whole problem with the voice for a while and focus on finding the killer of our old woman. Cool. This may help us to find out what is happening with the town in the long run. One of the suspects is Henry Saunders, a very hot tempered young man. He worked in his father's shop and often delivered groceries to our old woman. What? To our old to our grandmother. Just say uh, to our old woman. In July 1904, a fire broke out at his home on Durham Road 2. Only one body was found inside. It was heavily burnt, but we recognized it as Henry's wife by her jewelry. Saunders himself is mysteriously missing. I suppose he could rob our old woman and set his house on fire to fake his death and quietly leave the town. Wow. To confirm this, I need to know what exactly happened during the fire. So we got to send the survivor's dossier, which is Henry, the location of the survivor during the fire, which means we got to find out where the fire was. Thank you. They gave me a date of death. Oh, they gave me the date of death. I don't have to do the, I don't have to do the Zodiac thing. Before her marriage, she sold flowers on the corner of Barnhill and Durham. Okay. I don't need her life story. Just tell me the relevant parts. While living with her parents on Pinner Street. So she lived on Pinner Street, okay. After her marriage, she became a housewife and stopped going outside. Wow, Henry, a carpenter. He worked at his father's shop, but no one saw him there after the fire on Durham Road. During the fire, that would be... But what time? Well, maybe I need to... Maybe I do need to do it after all. It's not that big a deal. I've been complaining about it, but... April... Uh, 1st? April 1st, so you're Aries, wow. Where's Aries there? Oh, it's already there, it's already on there, that's nice. 
Aries is fire sign. First letter of the name, S. They do have identical letters. So either way, Saunders, it's S. So it's S and S. And that means three, three, nine, thirty, eight. Wait, what? September 30th. But that's wrong. Well then, okay, February 2nd, Aquarius, air sign, third letter of the name, N, N is five, more than five letters in the surname, there are, key letter is the fifth one, D, D, four, That's July 22nd. What? So Henry's actually dead. Not Sophia. It was, the body was heavily burnt, but we recognized it as Henry's wife by her jewelry. So Henry was, uh, Sophia put her jewelry on Henry's corpse. Damn, dude. So the survivor is actually Sophia. The location of the survivor during the fire. Well, I've already got that pulled up. Ah, uh -huh. 12 Penner Street. Marking where they are now. They're, they're the same, they're the same place. They're still at home? She because she lives with her parents on Pinner Street. So she's still she's still living with her parents? She faked her own death and then she was like, hi mom, hi dad. I'm gonna hang out here for a while. So and then uh, during the fire, and then where they are now. So it was a Mr. Saunders who died and not Mrs. Saunders. We found her at her parents' house. The poor girl burst into tears as soon as she saw the officer. I decided to ask her about possible dreams, and she looked at me shocked. She told me that the voice of the saint had ordered her to punish her cruel husband. Now, I remember, the very first case that we did, the mom said that she was um, of the first family of saints. Interesting. She told me that the voice of the saint had ordered her to punish her cruel husband. The amazing thing is that she is sure that this voice was a woman's. Dun, 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 dun. Henry Saunders can't be our murderer, but I'll keep digging. Let's try to find out which of the possible suspects recently got rich. Day nine, black sheep. Let's go. Our next suspect, Miss Danton, is an old lady and a longtime acquaintance of our grandmother. In October 1904, Miss Danton announced that she had won a check for $40,000. And a week later, her four grandchildren and sole heirs came to visit their lonely old lady for the first time in 15 years. Funny coincidence. Another surprising coincidence was that soon, Miss Danton died peacefully at her home at Glower Street 16. Determine which of them could have killed her. Until then, I will check whether she really won the money or she just visited our old woman. Uh, send the killer's dossier. Send the result of the victim's reading of the tarot cards. I like doing the tarot cards. Those are fun. Okay, let's take a look. She was quite an infuriating person. Wow. She didn't communicate with any of her relatives, at least until she won. But then, four grandchildren came to the city at once. The last few days before her death, she met a notary to draw up a will. After that, she died quietly in her sleep. 1904. We're going to have to figure out the date of death, aren't we? Ugh. Send the result of the killer's reading of the runes. Oh. Arthur Walsh. He came from the West and brought with him problems. He spends most of the day with a bar and a bar on... Is it Glower Street or Glower? Glower? Glower Street. Drinking, bothering local girls, and starting fights. He hasn't received his inheritance yet, but it looks like he's already started spending money. I'm sorry, but you look at this face. This is the face of a killer right here. A very practical and hardworking girl. She came to the city with her brother, and in the first week, she got a job at a local tailor. Oh, very low on information here. I color yellow 
Oh my God. Taylor Watkins also has yellow eyes. How is that possible? Lots of redheads in this game too. Lots of like evil redheads. <laughs> he was engaged in cattle transfer together with a group of friends. He said that he left everything behind when he found out that his grandmother needed him. He claims that he spends most of the day in the, in the stable on the outskirts of Pinner Street. Likely story, Taylor. What you, Andrew Danton? Who would have thought that someone from this crazy family could become a preacher? Mr. Denton, Danton actually, spends most of his day at the chapel on Rutland Road. He was even entrusted to conduct several local sermons. Let, first of all, let's do a tarot reading. Uh, shuffle these up. Let's uh, see what we got. They're glowing now. Justice, that was quick. Give it to me. The Magician, now that's number one. Killer used a false identity. Rune stones will allow you to find the secret of a person. They are located on the second floor. These are new. Rune divination allows you to reveal what other people hide. The, the last rune stone left on the uh, table will show the secret of a person. Your ideas about civilized society should already be changing. Now it seems to you that everyone around is hiding something. You're right, if you are still in doubt. Use the, oh sorry, you're right. If you are still in doubt, use the runes. They will reveal to you the secrets of the living. Those. Where are you? You're literally. That's why I thought, shut up, dude. Put the suspect dossier on the stand, okay? I will do that. Oh, the suspect. Okay, well, we'll put Arthur's on there first. Uh, I'll light the ritual candle when I'm ready. Throw the runes on the table from the bowl. Okay, we put them all in the bowl. Shut up. Put those of them that lie with the sign up back in the bowl. Clear the table and throw the runes from the bowl. Repeat the process until there is only one rune left on the table. If there are no runes left on the table to sign up, then divination cannot tell anything useful. The last remaining rune will reveal the main secret hidden by a person lately. So we found out that the killer used a false identity. What does that mean? Okay, let's try it. Okay, the signs pointing up. Uh, repeat the process till there's only one room left on the table. R. R is Ripo. Journey relocation. Person has found a new home. Oh, I'm saying that about Arthur. Oh, so I got to do this for Dorothy, Taylor, and Andrew soon. Fuck. It's down there. Oh my god, I took the longest way possible. Fuck off! What? Fuck you! So we're finding out about Dorothy right now. I assume that after this, it's just the same thing. P, and that's Wunjo. Joy, a new lover for Dorothy. Well, bully for you. How about you, Taylor? Taylor Watkins, yellow-eyed freak. Let's see what you got. I'm gonna just do it again, just to... But it looks like it's ha Hagalaz. Hagalaz. Person has lost a lot of money. Andrew. Te... Te... te was? The God of Tear. Person hides or changed his name. 
You. You changed your name. So it's Andrew then. Hmm. Like part of me? <laughs> Fuck you. Shut up. You know what? Just for that. Yeah. That's what I thought. No more, no more, no more of that. One on one hand, I'm like, well, what what's the story here? But on the other hand, it's kinda it's kinda creepier to just not really know why. But I guess maybe they'll, they'll tell me a little bit more on the next page. It seems that our preacher not only decided to play the role of the grandson, but also to speed up the process of obtaining an inheritance. I got confirmation from the organizers of the lottery. So his grandmother was really that lucky. Well, more or less. And our grandma, as it turned out, remained poor until her death. She spent all the money she earned on books, cards, and other fortune-telling tools. They are worthless to anyone but you. I have only one remaining suspect, Judge Brooks. He released several of the criminals that were found by our old woman, and she, in return, helped to lock several of his wealthy but dubious sponsors. They hate each other. Brooks retired several years ago and was happily forgotten by everyone. <laughs> I will try to find out what he's doing now. Okay. Day 10, murder at a masquerade. Our investigation has reached a dead end. I don't know what to do anymore. I thought Judge Brooks just moved out of town, but it turns out he died two years ago. In 1902, Judge Brooks was considered a significant figure who made this city what it looks like today, for better or for worse. It was said that he was going to run for mayor. His murder still continues to worry several influential people. These people were with him at the time of the murder. They saw the woman who killed him. The problem is that the murder took place during a costume party at his home at Durham Road 5. We sifted out all the guests and servants who had an alibi. You will receive files of others. Maybe if we solve his murder, we will have new evidence on our old woman's case. I know that chance is small, but I have no more ideas left. Okay. All right, Brooks. We have a date of death. Nice, 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 nice. A widower and an influential judge. He organized a costume party to celebrate his retirement. He wanted to reveal that he'll be running for mayor on that party. There were various rumors about his work with criminals, but there was no evidence to this theory. The local police did not look for the evidence, so it's no wonder. Josh Howard, assistant of the judge. Quite an ambitious person. During his short career, he has already managed to achieve several promotions and build a small but luxurious house on Highfield Street. I wonder... Where did he get the money? Edward Porter, the current mayor. So the guy that he would have been running against Judge Brooks. He was supposed to be his main rival during the election. Okay, they said that. I know several of Mayor Porter's former colleagues and they speak about him very well. Hmm, that's very little information. Christopher Riley, a young journalist, a representative of the newspaper Formal Informer. Okay. He was always happy to talk about his political views. Christopher returned to our town to cover the upcoming elections. He left the town a year after the murder. Now he lives in New York. John Jordan, a servant in the Brooks house, worked for Mr. Brooks and his late wife for the last 20 years. Molly Fox, she worked as a cook in the Brooks house. She got this job a year before the murder. A month before the death, neighbors saw her running out of his house in tears, but Miss Fox said it was due to problems in her own family. Kayla Jenkins, the matriarch of an influential but not very law-abided family. Okay, so the mob? Her sons own a significant part of the neighboring fields and lands. We receive constant complaints about their behavior, but none of them have yet been convicted. Brooks invited her to his party. Maybe it was a simple courtesy, or they agreed on some sort of alliance. Azariah, is that your name? The sister of Mr. Brooks' wife. Okay, so sister-in-law. After the death of Miss Brooks, their relationship deteriorated. At the farewell party, many people saw them arguing intensely about something. She became the heiress of the house and money of Mr. Brooks. Interesting. Where do I start here? Send the killer's dossier. Mark and send where the killer was at the hour of the crime. Send the killer's distinctive feature by performing dowsing on the victim. Um, We should just do that first. Okay. This will, I mean, the distinctive feature, we don't need anything else for it. It's a blue toy. So blue eyes is what we're looking at. Blue eyes. So murderer is blue eyes. 
So let's take a look and see if there's anybody we can uh, eliminate. So not Josh. Edward, he's still. Edward and Christopher. Not John. Not Molly. Kayla. Not Azariah. So it's either Kayla, Edward, or Christopher are the killer. That actually, that helped eliminate four people. That makes it a lot easier. We can do this killer was at the hour of the crime thing. Well, first of all, we need to figure out the hour of the crime. So I need to do Zodiac, crap, Leo. Oh, boring. Of course you would be a Leo. Sorry. It doesn't matter to me. F and S. So that's eight. Eight and three. Two, 21, and that's six. That's wrong. Bruh. Where, where was she? She was walking around, dude. Oh, I just did it wrong. Okay, B. B is two. Oh, yeesh. 821. That's way off. And then 19. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we have a time of death. So that would be the hour of the crime. And we're going to have to figure that out. I think I need to go do a tarot reading to learn more about, to narrow down the case. Okay. The magician. Killer used a false identity, used the runes. Okay, so that did actually, that actually didn't help us there. So we know, uh, let's try Eddie. Um, okay. D, that's Parasaz. New post. The target has lost or found a new job. Christopher. Let's find out about you, huh? That's Manaz. Person hides or changed the gender. Let's put Kayla in there. Tewaz, that is person hides or changed his name. What? Oh, sorry. Stop. Shut up. Stop it. There we go. So Kayla Jenkins isn't actually Kayla Jenkins. They're using a different name. I'm going to assume that they're not a transgender person and that they're masquerading as a man. So if that's the case, then it would both be a case of false identity. So then Edward's in the clear. I'm gonna leave him on here though. I know, we, I know, well, I know we gotta do the location. That's why I was saving for last. I guess I should just go do that though. Okay, so what am I putting down? 19, uh, 8, 21. 1902, right? Okay. So where were you? Do we know that? Do we know that? Durham 5, right? Durham, where's Durham? Oh, here we go. So that's where you were. I'm just ignoring it. Kayla wasn't around. Okay. Um. Is this it? That's why it says that they saw the woman who killed Brooks. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that I mean that that pretty much solves it then. Okay. Oh, the distinctive feature. 
killer has blue eyes. I almost sent the wrong evidence. Whew. Okay. And then the secret. Right. Okay. Yeah. This is everything. Cool. This young reporter sacrificed his morality and went for murder to help the town. He pretended to be someone else to commit murder, and this gave me an idea. There's something missing in the death of our old woman. She had no debts. She had no enemies left who wanted her death. The only few people she spoke to before the murder have alibis. I checked everybody, even you, except one. I used to think she killed in her sleep. She was killed in her sleep. Perpendicular wounds, strength that decreased with every blow. We're suggesting that... But there is another option, suicide. She staged a robbery, then put a knife to her chest and began stabbing herself as long as she could. She did everything to make her death look like the murder of our parents so that we can start an investigation so you can take her place. All of this is part of her plan and I'm afraid that soon we will find out exactly what she's up to next. No! That's it! No! I wanted to find out what happens next! Alright, well that was Prognostic. I played it for three hours and I didn't even mean to. I didn't think that I would. Holy crap, that was really good. I can't believe that's from the same developer as Palmyra Orphanage. I said it so long ago that I almost forgot it. Because um, Palmyra Orphanage I thought was very mediocre. This reminds me of like um, Reflect Studios games. The part where you're investigating, you're solving the mystery of, like, um, uh, scrutinized. It reminds me of scrutinized, uh, detective mode. But it's got, like, supernatural horror mixed in. It was very cool. Um, early access, so it's not done yet, but I'll definitely be returning to this. It's been... It's been a lot of fun. Um... And I was not expecting it to be as good as it was. So yeah, very cool. I, It seems like it's set up for, you know, like a lot of really complex cases could come out of this. I think that the cases were really simple. I was really hesitant about the last case because I thought that there might be more to it because it was the last case, it was case number 10. But I mean, you could make cases really complex. I think that would be, that would be really cool if like, you know, I, I think that the um, complexity ramp was very nice and smooth uh, with, with an occasional quickie thrown in there. Very uh, fun surprise there. So, yeah, really enjoyed it. Great stuff.